existing series. But with each and every one of them, we have time to do something new in developing them. And you're going to hear from our developers directly today what those new things are. While you're playing the games, this is brand new gameplay. We'll start with me. I'm sorry to have made you wait for so long. Pikmin 3 is finally complete. Now, I've been playing Pikmin 3 every day, so I still feel like there are Pikmin all around me. And I'm certain that Pikmin will appear around you too as you start to play. Now, as you can see from the three in the title, this is the third game in the series. But with every hardware we've developed, we've experimented with new ways to play Pikmin. It's just that those tests didn't feel appealing enough for us to complete those projects. It wasn't until we started work on Wii U that I was convinced for the first time that we finally had the right hardware, the perfect hardware for Pikmin. That was two years ago when I made my promise to you at E3. Now, I had to say the genre name and I would call it a real-time action strategy simulation game. It's a bit long, uh, so the development team is calling it an AI action game. But there really is no other game like this. Now, the, the Pikmin are positioned out the field, and you're trying to use them to accomplish as many things simultaneously as you can in a single day. You do so by walking around the field yourself, assigning different tasks. The AI that lets the Pikmin work on their own all across the map requires an enhanced CPU. And you need high resolution graphics to see the tiny Pikmin clearly in those natural environments. And the Wii Remote Plus is very handy for issuing commands to the Pikmin as they move. And what's very important with this game is the overall map. And you can check this at any time on the gamepad screen. And with the slide touch control, uh, you can survey the map detail and assign destinations to your explorers. And at the end of the day, you can review a replay of your accomplishments on the game pad. So I truly believe that this is a game that can be played only on Wii U. Now, the key to strategy in this game is understanding the abilities of the Pikmin. So this can dramatically increase the number of things you can accomplish in a single day. Now, you need to learn their abilities. The rock Pikmin break glass, the blue ones can carry objects through water, wing ones through the air. Right? And you can see that the yellow Pikmin are faster at digging, and the red ones impervious to fire. You can speed them up by giving them nectar. And you can... With, by carrying a ball of the same color, you can increase your picnic sprouts. And, and also, if you take the super, if you drink the super spicy spray, it will double their attack power. So we've got three different explorers that you control simultaneously in the game this time. So with three explorers, you can now do much more simultaneously across the map. And the explorers now can throw each other like they throw Pikmin. Oh, looks like they've broken down that wall. You complete one task with one group, you can instantly assign them another task. And as they throw each, as you throw the explorers and then the Pikmin, it adds puzzle solving elements and it opens up limitless strategic possibilities. And in fact, there's so much freedom in the game, I'm worried that you may find ways to play that we didn't even envision in development. Now, there's one more thing that's very important, and that is replayability. If you make a big mistake during the game day, you can replay that day. Or you can go back several days before and try from there. The selection menu has really been improved to make replaying the days easier. And as you get better, you may be able to clear the game in just 30 days. But there's not a 30-day time limit this time. In fact, from a design set, it's close to the original Pikmin, but if you collect the fruit used to create the juice you survive on, you can play for up to 100 days. So even people who are new to the series can take their time and complete the game. Also, boss damage meters are going to carry over from day to day. So if you can't defeat a boss within a single game, don't worry about it. You can kick back, you know, come back the next morning, defeat the boss, and then say, no. Oh, you know, what am I going to do with the rest of my day? It's less like playing game stages, it's a little bit more like real life. Now, Pikmin has three modes. So, in addition to story mode, we have the mission mode, and bingo battle. 
And these are the two modes that you'll be able to play here today. Mission mode, you'll find yourself collecting fruit, uh, battling the indigenous creator, creatures, or just fighting bosses. And when you're playing the boss battles, the two-player co-op mission mode is particularly fun. So, there's seven to ten minute long missions, score attack style makes it easy to pick up and play. And as you keep playing, you strategic, your strategic tactics tend to improve. It's going to make it easier for you to complete story mode in a shorter amount of time the next time you play through it. The bingo battle is a two-player battle mode. It's one-on-one. -on -one. In this mode, each player is trying to collect items to complete a line on their bingo card. So there are a wide variety of potential strategies in terms of choosing treasures to go after or getting in the way of your opponent. So even players of different skill level can play together thanks to the item roulette, which can turn the tide of what are really sort of white hot battles. So I'm speaking very quickly. That is a brief explanation of the game. The Pikmin 3 really is a game where you determine your own goals and you immerse yourself in the gameplay. I really feel the gameplay has reached its true potential, so I hope you'll all try it out here shortly. <laughs> Next up is Mario. <laughs> So I think uh, Noizumi Song and Bashida Song, who have been making the 3D Mario games with me since Super Mario 64, will explain it directly.